Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use Waves Super Rack Performer with the Behringer XR18. Now, if you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident with your production gear, no matter where you're starting from. Now, if you are on the path of learning and becoming a better audio engineer, jump over to my website at audiotoolkit.co where I have a weekly newsletter that's about a five to 10 minute read that will help you become a better audio engineer. I'm gonna be diving into a bunch of mixing secrets and even down into some nitty gritty system settings on there. So go check that out. Let's go ahead and dive in today on getting Wave Super Rack Performer set up with the Behringer XR18. Now, Wave's Super Rack Performer is a way that we can go and process a bunch of different channels with Waves plugins live while we're mixing. So Wave Super Act Performer utilizes the processing power of your computer and the audio interface of your mixer for being able to take your channels from your mixer, put them into Wave Super Act Performer, allows you to process those pl with plugins, and then outputs it back to your mixer for you to be able to actually mix with your live PA. Now, there is some latency that's added, which is set up by how much of a buffer size you have, which really isn't that big of a deal unless you have too large of a buffer for your setup, in which then you might have some extra added latency that might affect some things. So let's, let's talk about all of that here. But the first thing that I'm going to show you is on my Xair app that I have connected to my XR18 that's right here. If we go to input and output, we can see that my inputs are coming from my analog in. So I have one to one going all the way down to channel 16. So that means my channel 16 is coming in from my analog input 16. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to go over to USB sends. Now, I want waves to be directly after the input. So we want waves to be doing all of the processing. We're going to leave this on analog. Now, I'm wanting to make sure that my channel one is being sent out USB one. So we can see all of those going all the way down to channel 16. Now, my USB returns are also important because this would be the USB coming back from my Super Act Performer into my console. And so I want to have all of these set one to one as well. So we can see the output one on the USB is going into our channel one or USB input, basically output from the computer as a USB input on our device. So we can see that all of those are patched one to one, which is correct. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to grab a USB cable and connect from the USB port that's on the top of my mixer and plug that into my laptop. So this is a USB B port and I have this going into a USB C port on my computer. So I just have a B to C cable and I'll link that in the description below for a suggested cable that I use. So the next thing I'm going to do is open up my Super Rack Performer. And so once I have this open, I'm going to go to Setup and go to audio setup and I'm going to select my device. So we can see XR18 right here. And we want to make sure that the sample rate is set to what the mixer is set to, which will automatically do. And then this is our buffer size. So this is the portion where we go and select how much of a latency do we want to have. Now this is directly responsible for the processor load that's going to be put on your computer. So if you have a very, very good computer, you can get down into the 64 and maybe even 32 on our buffer size. If you have a mid to average computer, you're probably going to be more in the 192, 256, maybe 512. And if you have an older computer, you're probably going to be in the 1024 or the 2048. Now, the amount of latency is all just calculated. So a buffer size of 256 would give us 256 divided by, oops, let's actually type that right, divided by 48,000 hertz. And then this is going to give you the amount of seconds of delay. So we're talking about milliseconds. So if we move this decimal point over, we have 5.3 milliseconds of buffer. Now this is going to be both on the input and the output. So if we're running a buffer size of 256, we're going to have about 10 milliseconds of delay from our input here coming into the laptop, 
being processed by waves, being put back into the XR18 for us to mix. Now, if we set this to 1024, we can then do the math on that. So 1024 divided by 48,000 hertz of our sample rate, and that's 21 milliseconds of latency on the input and 21 milliseconds of latency on the output. Now, that's a lot of latency if you are doing something live. Now, if you're actually meeting up with video, uh, then it's actually not that big of a problem because one frame of video is about 33 milliseconds of time. So video typically gets processed and takes longer than audio processing. So if you are using this setup for stream, then you can run a buffer size of 1024 or 2048 and not actually notice any difference because it's actually going to sync up with your video. But if you're doing something live, I always suggest getting this buffer size as fast as possible without having any pops or delays or dropouts of from your computer. So for today, I'm going to go ahead and set this to 256. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is go to settings and I'm going to change my configuration to be on 16 racks. And it's going to ask and I'm going to press OK. Now what this means is that I have 16 channels of racks here available to me for using with my XR18. And so once I've done that, then I can go and assign my inputs. So I can go and go input one is on input one. And so we can go rack two is going to be on input two. Our rack three is going to be input three and four, five, six. Now rack seven is actually my overheads. And so those are stereo. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go select stereo and go to input seven and eight. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to treat these as a stereo pair, but I will have one extra rack available, but no available inputs or IO for that rack because I've already used seven and eight here. So then the next thing I'm going to do is on nine and then 10. This is just the tedious process of setting it up the first time. Twelve. Thirteen. And then this rack, I'm actually just going to put lines for. Okay, so we have all of our tracks here. So we have all of our tracks and we can actually go name these. So this is kick and this is snare top and this is snare bottom and this is tom one, tom two, tom three and then we have electric guitar one, electric guitar two. We have acoustic guitar bass, keys, uh, actually piano, keys, vocal one, and vocal two. Okay, so now that we have this set, what we need to do is we need to first sound check our band without waves because the volume that we set at this input is very important because if we start raising this input high enough, we're actually going to be clipping our Wave Super Act Performer, which is not good. So we want to be using correct gain when we're setting this. So when you're setting it, you want to be making sure that you're hitting that nominal level of about negative 18 dBFS. And then we hitting that level of around negative 18 dBFS. Now, once we've sound checked the band and we have everything set with the band on the preamp levels, what we can do is we can actually swap over to USB. And so I'm going to go pull up my DCAs here and unmute them. Go to my DCAs and we can unmute the band. Okay. And so 
I can go and switch over to USB on all of these channels. So now the audio that we are hearing is post my waves. So if I go and mute these, it's actually muting all of my channels. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and add a plugin, I would just go find a plugin that I want to add. So for instance, if we wanted to go ahead and add in a C6 or F6, sorry, we can go ahead and select an F6. And then we have this on our kick. And then we could do that for the rest of the remaining channels as we wish. Now, the one thing that I really like about the XR18 version of this setup is that I still have the ability of adjusting my analog input right here on the same page as each of these channels. So if I notice that my kick is starting to clip the, pr the preamp up here, I can just go back to my Xair edit program, select my kick, and I can adjust the mic gain of my analog input right here. Now, this is the trim for my USB. So if I found that I was clipping uh, my channel here, hopefully I'm not because I need to keep a correct processing amount on my plugins here, but I can adjust my uh, USB trim up and down here if I wanted to. But typically we would leave this at zero. Just remember that we need to set the preamp gain on our analog input correctly for utilizing Wave Super Act Performer. Now, I hope this video was helpful for you today. I really love Wave Super Act Performer. It's a great way of adding Waves plugins to my mix, even if I'm using a Behringer XR18. Now, if you do happen to have any questions or there's a video that you're hoping that I would make on really any of the mixers that are out there, please post that in the comment section down below as I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are gonna be helpful for you. If you haven't already, make sure to go over to my website at drewbrashler.com where I have a bunch of presets available for the XR18. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day.